How are you guys doing? Tonight we are going to, um, I'm going to bombard you with a ton of scripture. Yay. <laughs> I'll take it. So, but before we do that, um, if you wouldn't mind just standing with me, if you're able to stand. First off, I want to just honor, honor our pastors who are, who are away in South Africa, as Raymond has already mentioned. I don't take it lightly that I would be given the honor to stand in uh, Pastor Johan's pulpit and on his platform. Uh, you never take it lightly when you get asked to, 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 um, to bring the word to another man's flock and sheep. And so tonight I just want to honor uh, Pastor Johan and Miss Elise as, as the set couple for this house in particular and, and for Andrew for actually asking me, actually when he asked me uh, to do this, I was with Raymond and, and when he asked, I said, um, who are you talking to? Who are you asking to do this? And he said, you big bro. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so, um, so I do consider it an honor and a privilege to stand before you as God's people. Say this with me, the Imago Dei. The Imago Dei. The Imago Dei is simply this. The Imago Dei, it is the image of God. We bear the image of God. The image of God carries with it several declarations of who we are in Christ and the anointed Jesus. So what we're going to do before I actually get into this teaching tonight, we're going to simply remind ourselves of just a few of them. Uh, there are over 71 uh, characteristics and declarations that we could actually um, affirm in our hearts and in our lives, but right now we're just going to do 10 of them. This is not about positive thinking, although we will think positively. We're simply going to rehearse the word of God. Romans 10, 17 says this. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. We are, in a, we are in a church where the word of God is preached. So, so just repeat after me. In the name of Jesus, I reinforce that. I am a son of God. I am saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. I'm born of incorruptible seed. I am redeemed by the blood. I am forgiven of all of my sins. I am a new creature in Christ. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I am beloved of God. I am seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the last one, I am part of a chosen generation. Amen. You may have a seat. So I set you up is what I did. We oftentimes have to be reminded of who we are in Christ. Sometimes we just, we forget. Life happens and, and so from time to time we, we forget these are just what we, what, what we confessed, thank you, what we confessed is just 10. It's 10 declarations directly from the word of God that reminds our hearts and our minds of who God says that we are through Christ Jesus. Tonight what we're going to talk about, and this is something that the Lord has just been walking me through, just in my own personal journey, we're actually going to talk about righteous judgments. Righteous judgments. So if you have your Bibles, uh, I think uh, we, may, we may have this PowerPoint. So John chapter 7, verse 24. I'm going to read it out of the King James, and, and, then, I'll, and then I'll read it out of the Passion Translation. It says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteousness but judge righteous judgment. 
The Passion says, stop judging based on the superficial. First, you must embrace the standards of mercy and truth. By definition, the word to judge simply means the forming of an opinion, an estimation, a notion, or conclusion as from circumstances presented to the mind. Whenever we meet people, we generally have our own, we have our own suppositions. We, we come up with our own idea of who the person is that we've met. And here's the thing, we don't know their story. We don't know who they are. But we make these assumptions about individuals. The church is very good at making assumptions about one another. We make them all, all the time about one another. And then we call that discernment. When in fact what we're actually doing is we're actually judging people. So like I said, I'm going to give you a ton of scripture. We are going to get, as it were, we're going to get milk drunk on the word. Because before you leave here, we want to establish, and I have about 20 minutes, about 14 minutes now, to lay a very, very quick, fast foundation. So Proverbs 24, verse 23 says this. It says, these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to show partiality in judgment. Thus, judgment should be measured equally. That word to show means to recognize faces. So when I engage you and I am making decisions based on what I see, or based on what I think I know. Scripture says this. It says that this kind of thing belongs to the wise. So we don't want to necessarily make harsh and, 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 and fast judgments against people, against circumstances or situations with people that we just don't know. We don't know where people are coming from. We don't necessarily know what they've been through. And, and we have these categories of judgments that we place on people. Some not so much. And then we have, then we have this category of where we judge people and we want to condemn them to a hell or to a heaven that we didn't create. Okay? So Leviticus 19, 15, like I said, we're going, to get, we, we're going to get a lot of scripture because we're going somewhere. You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. So the question then becomes, who's your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Your neighbor is anyone that your neighbor is anyone with whom you come in contact. That's your neighbor. It doesn't necessarily mean the person that who, that you live next door that you can get a cup of milk from or sugar or a couple of eggs because you're baking. The person that you're choosing to engage is that that person becomes your neighbor. So there are some, there are some psychological things whether we believe it or not, that happens when we judge people. Did you, did you know that? So here's what judgment looks like. So the first picture that, that I had up was, was a, gavel and a, a, and a, a gavel and a hammer. And that picture right there. The only person who can use such a thing is a judge. So when, when a judge makes a decree or, or he makes a declaration, he is saying, once I say this, it's a done deal and it can't be overturned. So when we pronounce judgments, and scripture says this, 
it says, a curse cannot come without a cause, a curse, a judgment. Here, here's, I'm going to give you a word that I'm going to be using pretty much all night. Say this word with me, measure. Measure. There is a measure. There's a measure. So what we do when we judge people, we pronounce a sentence on them that in our own minds and in our own hearts will not be overturned. We place a cap on their potential to be anything other than the judgment that we've placed on them to us. Why am I, why am I talking about judgments tonight? Part of the reason why I'm talking about judgments tonight is, is because the Lord has just simply been just dealing with my own heart. As, as we, as a body of believers here at Love's Way, as we begin to move into the next dimension of what God is doing, the Lord said to me, he said, son, I'm doing an audit of your life. See, judgment first begins with the house of God. God deals with his own kids first. He has to deal with us first before he, before he allows others to come to us. So he says, son, I'm doing an audit of your life. I'm going over every page. I'm looking at every ledger of your heart. And I'm looking at the things that you've said. And I'm weighing them. He is the righteous judge. Judging people changes you. It doesn't change them. Judging people without righteousness locks you out of relationship with them and those around them. To judge is to withhold love from the other person, and you will never see them, number one, and you'll never see their potential. This is what judgment does to people. I won't see you because of, what I, because of, what, because of how I've locked you out. I won't even see you, much less love you. We judge people based upon circumstances, single events, one-time interactions, incomplete information with no possibilities of building a relationship with the accused. This is, this is what judgment does. So there is, there is a physiological effect that takes place on the human body when I pronounce a judgment on you. It affects your health. The Bible says, be careful and do not let any root of bitterness spring up in you. Above all else that you do, Proverbs 4.23, not in my notes. Above all else that you do, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues, the forces, the boundaries of life. The responsibility to guard your heart from judgment and criticisms is not the responsibility of God. It's ours. Proverbs 4.23, above all else that you do, you, it's not in my notes, you guard your heart. Guarding your heart is simply this. It is, it is you on a regular basis doing an inventory of the things that you allow to come out of your mouth. If it comes out of your, if it comes out of your mouth, it has been in your heart. And to tell people, that's not what I meant. The devil is a liar that you did mean it. You absolutely meant it. For out of it what? Your heart. Flow these things. Thus be careful. That that your soul isn't contaminated. And that you can't see people the way, in God, the way that God intended for us to see them. 
We must see people the way they are and not how we are. We will mess up their value with an incomplete measure. Now, Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2, we, we, we all know it. If, if you're a good Baptist, and that is no disrespect, if you're a good Baptist, you know, this, you know these two verses. Judge not that you, that, you, that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, see, there's my word. It will be, here my, here's my word again, measured back to you. All right. This, this, this word judge is, is very interesting. It says, to de, it says to determine and to discern something. When, you, when you're looking or when you're, it, it, it gives the idea of, of, of examining like a scientist. You're, you're, you're picking it up. You know, you're going through it. You're trying to get down to the. You're trying to get down to the, to its, 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 its basic fabric and fiber. When, 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 when we use the word judge. Now, here's my word. It says for with what judgment, with what decision, is another word, or with what decree. You make which is only for a, judge that you use to measure that thing that you have measured comes back to you. Now the word measure, from the Greek, it, it means metron. We, we also get the word meter. You know, we know that one meter equals, equals three feet, et cetera, et cetera. So this word measure talks about l limited or limitations of portions. It is, it is a standard rule. It, 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 it becomes like a gold standard. It talks about a fit. It, it talks of, um, of the measure of the benefits which one confers on, on someone else. Oftentimes, people are... Um, see, we often measure people through a mirror. Have you ever wondered um, when you're around certain people and in some cases they kind of get on your nerves and you're trying to figure out what is it, what is it, what is it? Well, that would be me. Um, that, it's okay if I don't, it, it's, it's okay. So this is saying with the same measure that you use, you're actually looking in a mirror. So when this person over here gets on your nerves, your last nerve, what is actually going on is they are reflecting what's in you. With the same measure that you're using is the same measure by which you have to stand and be measured by. We receive in measurement what we give in judgment. Amen? All right. If you pronounce love to someone or over someone, that is God to you. So, so here's what I learned. I, I, anyone who is really close to me. I don't tell people that I think I'm something that I'm not. That, that famous P word, prophet, I, I don't do it. But I learned something from Chris Vallotton out of Bethel Church. He said, he said those of you who move prophetically, and, and, and this, was, this was something that he was talking, he, he was specifically talking about prophetic people. He said, if you have not been healed in the memories of your soul about your daddy, what you will prophesy is out of the same broken place of your soul to other people about a daddy that you have issues with. He was specifically talking about prophetic people. 
So here's what we do with judgment. We do the same thing. We judge people based on this broken, this broken relationship that we have with God, thinking that if I, if, if, if I place this, if I, if I place this label on the other person, I feel better about myself and my relationship with God. It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. So here's my question. Can we handle the measure, metron, that we give others for ourselves? I'm going to jump down to, um, to another scripture in, in, in John chapter 5, 22, 23. This scripture actually set me free about, about, who, about who God actually is to me. It, it, it actually set me free. It says, for the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son, that all should honor the son just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the, who, he who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. So we have been giving God a bad rap. God stopped judging us. How do we know? He placed all the weight of judgment and sin. He placed it on his son. Then he says, now my son, all authority to judge, to condemn, to set free, to bless, to release, I gave it to my son Jesus. Okay, y'all looking at me funny. All right. The father, the father, uh, uh, this is the Passion Translation. The father now judges no one, for he has given all, all the authority to judge to the son so that the honor that belongs to the father will not be shared with his son. All right. Then it says, for this is my, for this is my blood, Matthew 26, 28. This, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. Okay? Then Matthew 28, 18, it says, And Jesus came and, 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 Jesus came and said to them, All authority in, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's your Bible. So anyone who's able to judge, he's the only one. If he did not give us the authority to judge each other, If he has all the authority and he's not judging us, then we don't have the room to judge other people. What have we been given? We have been given the opportunity to love one another as Christ. Scripture says this, husbands love, husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church. That word as, it, it is defined as with the same quality and with the same kind. Husbands, love your wives with the same quality and kind of love that you've received from the Father. Now do that with your wives. As is a very powerful word. Powerful word. What authority and right do we, do we as believers have, have to judge? Luke 6, 37 and 38. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put in your bosom, for with the same measure that you used, it will be, here's my word, measured back to you. So, the first half of that scripture we generally take it out of context because we're always talking about tithing and offering, generally speaking. 
I'm sorry, the second half of that scripture is what we generally run to. Given it will be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give, give unto your bosoms. That's the part that we love to teach and to share, and, and we jump and skip over. Go back to the first part. What makes the second part that, that much more powerful is the fact that we respond to God based on the first part. The blessing, the, the blessing that overflows in a, in a person's life comes from the first part. So here's what, here's what the writer did. What the writer did was he was making one complete thought. It was one complete thought. It wasn't two separate thoughts. We see, we see it as two different verses, but it's not, it's not two different verses. It's one thought. So in order... In, 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 in order to have the, press down, the good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, that men will give to your bosom, in order to even receive that, don't judge, don't condemn, forgive, and give. Here's the totality of the gospel. I'll, I'll sum it up in four, in, in four words. Forgive, love, love, forgive, Give, repeat. That's the gospel. That's the totality of the gospel. Love, forgive, give, repeat. That's your gospel. When we live out of that place, the, the, the willingness to judge won't be there. Here's the reason why I believe, this is just me, well, I believe a lot of times we miss the first half. You know the passage of scripture where it says, if, there, if there's any sick among you, call upon the elders of the church and let them pray for you. And then it says, um, come back to me. I, I know you. Come back. What's the second part of that scripture? They will be healed. Then the, the second part of that scripture, it, it says, call upon the elders, call upon the, if there's any sick among you, call upon the elders of the church. They will pray for you and you will be healed. Then it says, the effectual, the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Guess what? We quote that out of context. That's one thought. Confess your faults one to another so that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Confess your faults one to another so that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Are you tracking with me? To the measure and degree by which we confess our faults one to another determines the measure and degree by which God will heal you. That particular scripture is talking about physical healing. So when we don't confess our sins, when we don't say, I'm wrong, it determines my metron. It determines my measure of how much God is going to heal me physically, financially, emotionally, psychologically. It's dealing with your soul. Confess your faults one to another. That means you got to confess that you're human. Confess your faults one to another so that you might be healed. Then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So, my confession of my sin determines the potency and the effectiveness of my prayer life. <laughs> so if, 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 if we're wondering why we're struggling in certain areas of our walk with Jesus, 
Number one, look at what's coming out of your mouth. And secondly, look at your confession. Here's why I'm, I'm teaching on this. God has been tearing me out the frame. He has been measuring the weight of my heart. I want to be used by God. I want to partner with him. So he is coming after everything that does not look like him. And let me tell you something about God. I told the Lord, and I'm, and I'm done. I'm, I'm sorry, Andrew. The last thing I said, I said, God, sometimes I don't like you. Sometimes I just don't. Son, why? Because you're sovereign. I don't, get to, I, don't, I don't get to do what I want with you. Because you're sovereign. That means you are in absolute control. And I can't do nothing about it. Because you're just sovereign. After I get that out, I repent. <laughs> I do. And then the grace of God for me to upgrade my yes to the Lord again. One of the things that I believe about Love's Way Church, and, I, and I'm done, Andrew, you can come. One of the things that I, that, I, that I believe that God is doing in Love's Way Church, I believe that God is raising the standard of righteousness in our lives. There is there is coming a wave of the grace of God to this house. And I need to be prepared for it. I don't want to be one of the foolish virgins. We, con we condemn the virgin. We, we condemn the foolish virgins. But they, you cannot find in scripture that they sinned. They just were unprepared. But we want to beat up on these five little girls. And, and that, and, and all it was at the end of the day was they were not, five, five were wise, five were prepared. Five were not. I want to be one of the five. I want to be one of the five. Who's prepared. For when... For when God releases, and, 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 we're, and we're seeing it in small doses, and we're seeing it in small, there's my word, small measures. We're, we're seeing it in small amounts where the presence of God is being released in this place. And God, is, God really is doing a new thing. As he's doing a new thing, I want to know what he's doing. I want to know what he's saying. I'm nosy like that. Don't leave me out. I just am. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that, you that you have given us ears to hear. Father, I ask that you would upgrade our hearts to apply your word, to live at an altitude that very few will live because of the requirements that you have set. Father, we love your house. We love your word. We thank you for our pastors. In Jesus' name. Awesome job, Solomon. Can we give him a hand? <laughs> These are the kind of words that you gotta chew on and you gotta repeat those scriptures at home you can't make an altar call. I could say, who has been judging too much? <laughs> come repent. And, uh, and, it, and it, it wouldn't, pride wouldn't let you come. <laughs> but you got to confess your sins. No, I'm just kidding. But these, this is honestly a word to chew on. And I want, I want you to do that at home. And I, I can concur. And I heard many of you say amen that God is taking us to another level. 
there is, there is a grace that God has. And I, I'm concerned, I'm not trying to re-preach anything, but I'm concerned for the church in general that we're trampling on the grace of God and saying that we can do whatever we want. And that's not what grace is. The Bible says just because grace increases when sin increases doesn't mean that you continue on to sin. And so I'm grateful for words that call us to a next level of standard. And when you hear that, those words, it brings a responsibility into our lives. And that's awesome. God is good. Tonight, I wanna, if you need prayer, um, after we dismiss, if you need prayer, we don't need music, we just need God. And if you need prayer for anything, if you wanna get your life right with Jesus, if you need a miracle, if whatever it is that you need from God, we're gonna be here to pray with you. I'll hang out as long as you need prayer. But we do have snacks for you tonight and hangout time. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. It's really good. And my, y'all are my second favorite bunch. My first favorite bunch is the Friday night prayer people. <laughs> I, I have to be honest. My second favorite people is the Wednesday night crowd. And then my third favorite people, I didn't add any disfavorites. I mean, disliking people. My third favorite Sunday morning people. But you are my second favorite people in this room. It's not a judgment. It's just, tr it's, just fa it's, it's factual opinion. <laughs> and I appreciate you so much. And I look forward to you guys helping me preach again this Sunday. I need an amen corner people leaning in. <clears throat> a preacher can never preach well without people that will lean in and really, really give it back. And so um, I expect all these, th this row right here was empty Sunday, and I expect that one, that one, that one, and that one, and that one, all full. Unless the uh, kids have reserved it, then don't, don't rip up their papers. But um, God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. See you Sunday. Actually, hopefully we'll see some of y'all Friday, and then we'll see you Sunday.